Hi, Jack. Sorry. <laughs> Take two. Um, hi, Jack. Thank you so much for meeting me today to speak about Sing Street. Pleasure. Um, so the first thing that struck me about your character, Brendan, is that he's quite different to kind of the boy next door type characters you'd normally play in, say, films like Transformers, what Richard did. But did you find um, the character in any way relatable? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I would find it very difficult to play any character that I didn't find relatable. Um, but this one in particular was quite close to my heart. I knew people like this as I was growing up. Um, I had, you know, different figures in my life who I turned to for advice when I was a kid and whose culture I responded to and whose opinions really mattered to me. And uh, that's the kind of person this guy is. And um, obviously for John Carney, this is uh, a, a, quite a personal movie. And um, he really trusted me with the role, you know? And I really trusted him as a director, and I think that we, between us, managed to find a really good character. You play kind of the music guru, really, in the film, um, who the main character, Cosmo, kind of turns to for both um, brotherly, worldly, and music-related advice. But how familiar were you with kind of 1980s uh, pop music before the film? Very. Um, I'd grown up listening to music from the 80s, and uh, I had a lot of exposure to the culture of that era. So it wasn't a big stretch for me to, uh, you know, kind of give this kid a bit of advice when it came to music of that time. But uh, yeah, it was fun. It was like that was a big draw for me to the script that, you know, it was set in the 80s and it was very much of that era and it had a lot of the humour of that time as well. Have you kissed her yet? Oh, she's got a boyfriend. Pulled off in his car, music blaring. What was he listening to? Genesis. No woman can truly love a man who listens to Phil Collins. Because you play more of a kind of advisor role, um, you you didn't your character didn't have a lot to do musically. Were you disappointed by this or happy enough to kind of step? I'm back? not a musician at all. Okay. By any stretch, <laughs> uh, you know. Um, I was saying in an interview a second ago that I was really taken aback when I watched the film for the first time in Sundance. At uh, Ferdia and Mark and the other lads in the band because it was the first time I'd been part of a film that really did have its roots in music um, and I was amazed that not only could they convey so much with their performances as actors in the film but that their music really defined their characters and who they were and ultimately that's kind of what the movie is about it's this music that defines this kid and starts to shape his future um, and that's an amazing thing and like when Ferdy and Mark got up at Sundance and they played some live tracks for the audience people were really moved by it you know um, and that's not something that I as an actor have the ability to do in the same way we can't just get up on a stage and just do something and make people really feel something but as musicians these guys can do it and you just have to have a lot of admiration and respect for that. It's an amazing thing. And it's interesting you mentioned Ferdia there, actually, because I was going to ask about your relationship, because obviously you share a lot of um, scenes with him, mm -hmm. and he would have been like a first-time actor, really, in this film. So did you kind of take a brotherly attitude with him with regards to kind of showing him maybe some of the acting ropes as well? Or uh, No, I didn't really need to, because um, Ferdia's got very good natural instincts. And... He'd never acted before, which means that he didn't really have the ability to act, as it were. And acting is a problem. When you can feel somebody's acting, they're not doing something the right way, basically, you know? So uh, I think it's pretty apparent in the scenes that he and I have together that he's very natural and that he's responding to what I'm saying to him as any 14-year-old would respond. And... Uh, yeah, we had we had a really good experience with Ferdia for that reason. I think that throughout the course of making the film and since, um, you know, he's developed uh, his skills and his talent for film, um, and I think that's going to stand to him. Uh, but you know, like I say, he had great instincts from the start, and he's a very talented young man. 
Looking at your own um, kind of wider career, you would have done Sing Street and then as well, Jim Sheridan's The Secret Scripture is coming up. So you're still involved in Irish productions, but also international productions, for example, um, Andy Serkis's Jungle Book Origins. Mm -hmm. is, the, is maintaining a balance between being involved in both Irish and international productions important to you or is it ever a struggle? Um, there's, uh, I suppose there's kind of two things about that really, because it is important for me to make Irish films. This is where I come from. I think that we have a lot of stories that are worth telling here. Um, certainly as I begin to uh, write things and move kind of a little bit towards directing smaller projects through my own company, um, my focus is on Irish stories and Irish people and Irish um, themes really. But, uh, you know, I don't feel in any way like I'm tethered to Ireland and like I need to constantly be making films here. It just so happens that we have a great um, opportunity right now and a great forum as an industry um, to, to say a lot of great things uh, in Irish film, you know? Like, I mean, look at what Lenny's doing right now with Room. Um, he's just got his Oscar nomination for that, obviously. Michael's out there with Steve Jobs. Search is out there with Brooklyn. It's a big year for the Irish this year. Every year for the last five years has been a big year for the Irish. We're all doing very well. I think all of us um, are very supportive of one another. There's not a huge amount of competition um, between us because ultimately, you know, the population of Ireland is now bigger than the population of Manchester. So in order for any of us to do really well, the rest of us kind of have to be behind one another. Uh, and that's a really good thing. At the same time, uh, for me, as an actor, my choices are just about diversity. It's about what can I do that I haven't done before? What can I do that's interesting and fresh for an audience? Who can I work with who is up and coming? Who's, who's, who's a unique and interesting voice in cinema right now? Um, and those are the things that I actively try and pursue. Great. Um, so just my final question, just in terms of looking ahead, what can you tell us about um, your upcoming role in Jim Sheridan's The Secret Scripture? Um, that uh, is a film based on a Sebastian Barry novel. Uh, it's about uh, a young girl who um, is kind of uh, ostracized from her community and um, ends up in a sort of a love triangle really and I play one of the characters um, who I guess she's in love with uh, and uh, yeah I play uh, a character called Michael McNulty who's been flying for the RAF which again doesn't go down too well with the dissident Republicans in the local community um, and uh, yeah it's kind of about in a way, I suppose it's about how uh, her relationship and his relationship kind of grows and uh, what, what happens with the two of them. It's, it's a very difficult film to explain. Uh, I think I'll have to leave you to watch it. There's not a huge amount I can say about it either, but it was very exciting to work with Jim and uh, Rooney, who I got on great with. and. Theo James and um, Tom Von Lawler and Aidan Turner, those guys obviously who I'd known before who I was pals with. So yeah, it was good. I'm excited about it. It's brilliant. Thanks very much, Jack. Thank you very That's much. That's great. Cheers.